Thank one, you very much. One uh, question each. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Yeah, I think I'll just uh, raise one question. Uh, Honorable Paranya, you are the Minister for Planning in the Kibaki administration. And you basically authored Vision 2030, which actually today is a blueprint and is the roadmap for development for Kenya. I don't think there is another more serious document that has come about. Uh, governing is a social contract. And when you talk about MSCs, uh, MS, uh, <laughs> uh, mi micro, medium, small enterprise, and cooperative is part of our people. It is that development which you in Kakamega or that governor in Marsabet or that governor in Wasungishu looks at because it is about the people. Now, if we put the two together, Vision 2030 and the job, if Parliament approves your nomination, what do we see the link between the two? Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, thank you, uh, Honorable Speaker. Uh, I want to uh, pose a question to the nominee with the great experience he has in the government since Kibaki time, and as my colleague said, the author of Vision 2030. Uh, do you think it will be viable to continue having separate funds to help the youth, the women in Kenya, whereby they are domiciled in different ministries and management. For example, we have Weweso Fund, domiciled at youth, women fund at gender, youth fund at youth uh, ministry, then ASLA at cooperative. Is it, from, from your experience, is it viable? And if it's not viable, will you be suggesting to the, uh, to the government of the day and the uh, executive whether we can pull these all, all these funds to one uh, basket whereby proper management, proper resource, and proper distribution of these funds to Kenyans to help the economy grow? I just want to hear your, your thoughts on that because we must do things differently. Robert? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Now, cooperative societies are riddled in debt all over. I'll give you an example of when I was elected in uh, Kadiani. The coffee factories there, the coffee cooperative societies were all in debt and all kept coming to us to try and help them to raise money. I would like you to maybe explain to us how they get into debt, so deeply in debt, and how you as government can be able to help them. But Mr. Speaker, you know, interesting times uh, listening to my leader uh, from Azimio defend the Hustler Fund, which we were very seriously uh, opposing. And I'm, I'm also learning a lot. But uh, you, have, you, have, you have confessed some things here, and uh, I sympathize with you when you talk about how ESCC has actually and you did this on oath, that ESCC was actually acting as a political tool, fighting you because of exercising your democratic right uh, in picketing under Article 37. Now, when, if, we are approved, if we are approved, then you will be sitting in cabinet, and you know there is that thing we call collective responsibility. So you'll be part of government. Maybe you can tell us, how will you use that office to ensure that this persecution does not continue again in this country? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yes, um, uh, uh, Speaker, I would like to direct this question to the nominee. You know, there's, there was, during President Kibaki's time, there was this famous saying, what gets measured, gets done. And um, it, it, it spoke into the realm of performance management. 
and uh, I think you were there, uh, the Honorable Speaker was there, and this country's growth during that time was measured on, was actually pedestaled on performance management, which was translated into performance contracts. And we realized that we could actually measure the growth of the country day by day because every institution in this country, every ministry had the responsibility to measure performance and therefore deliver on uh, certain deliverables. It was also pegged on Vision 2030, which you've been accredited, accredited to be the author and also the person who ensured that Vision 2030 was implemented. In the last 10 years, in the last 10 years, we never saw uh, the previous regimes talk about performance management and how to pa manage performance going forward. As you come into cabinet with this, uh, if approved by this committee, of course, uh, with this knowledge, with this vision, with this experience, how are you going to bring back the good old things that were really helping in the growth of, of this country? Noting that President Kibaki's time, Kenya, uh, really uh, had great performance uh, and, and your knowledge on it, your experience, now that we are bringing you in, uh, the new people that are there, how are you going to help cabinet approve performance management, which I think is the best tool to measure performance. How are you going to help this country uh, in that realm? I thank you. Nominee, deal with those four. I, I, I started with Mula or? No, we did or us. Uh, the social contract cooperative link between the two. Uh, can you repeat that question? I think I missed something out of it. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker. What I said is that when you talk about SMEs uh, and you talk about uh, cooperatives, it is about our people. Although we can run away, it is what you call the bottom up. B because that is the economy at Mashinani there. Vision 2030, which you authored and which you presented to Kenyans, is the roadmap to development that we are using until today. So I'm saying if you link the two, as the immediate former governor of Kakamega, how are you able to link the two to see that are we making progress in Vision 2030? Yeah, thank you very much uh, for the, that question. I think now I have understood, Mr. Chairman. First of all, the Vision 2030 is, is a long-term blueprint for development of this country. And it came up during the times of uh, the former president, the late Mike Buck. And this, uh, this document is a very good document, if you have an opportunity of reading it again. But unfortunately, the other governments, when they, get, uh, they came in, they tried to come in with their own things. Some of the issues being undertaken now are out of line. But that's not bad, because we had said in the vision clearly that the environment, the business environment, the economy environment changes. So you are also supposed to come up with those changes to address changes in the planning, to address those particular changes that have happened. And that's why I'm saying that when we came up with uh, Vision 2030, cooperative services were put under financial services in the Vision 2030. If you go to the page of financial services, cooperatives are there. By that time they were planning, cooperatives were not given emphasis, unfortunately. They were put there, and if you read them, you read that, it's just a paragraph, which was unfortunate. Forgetting that cooperatives are the engine of development for this country. So the link between the two is that cooperatives were recognized. 
but unfortunately they were not given emphasis. We are now saying that this time for us to grow the same means we must grow cooperatives. That is critical. And the fact that SMEs have been taken as a pillar, one of the five pillars that the transformation of the economy of this country has to be undertaken through SMEs. The question uh, of Honorable Mule, that there are various uh, funds, Uweso Fund, Women Fund, Youth Fund, Hustler Fund. Uh, fortunately, Honorable Mule, these funds have been put under one ministry now, under SMEs, except for Youth Fund, which was there briefly, and it was taken to the Ministry of Youth, and I think that was a mistake. These funds were meant for different purposes, but they were also established to, up, to address uh, various concerns at that time. That time, our good women were making noise that they need a fund. So whoever was in power at that time responded by creating a, woman, a women fund. The same for youth. And the Wesso Fund is the, the very basic one. In fact, Wesso Fund can easily be am amalgamated with the Hustler Fund. But the only difference is that the Wesso Fund is at the constituent level. So now, if you start now amalgamating it to the Hustler Fund, which is sort of on a digital plot platform at the, national, uh, at the national level, then it becomes a problem. But uh, for easy management and proper focus, I will agree with you that these funds be brought together. And let us have departments within those units. And those departments are given a budget. This is 200 million. Make sure that they go to the women. This is a particular, this is, this is one billion, let it go to the youth. This is a particular, this amount is for people uh, living with uh, disabilities, let it go to that. That will also reduce the cost of running this, this fund. So we have one board, one management, that is the best way. But sometimes to do this is a political decision to be made. And that is maybe a decision that you can leave it to the president to make. Because when youth fund was put under SMEs, quickly, I think the Minister of Youth complained. And then because of the political play that time, it was moved out of it. Uh, the, the, the question raised by, by Robert, MP for Katiani, uh, Uh, the, the issue of debt write-off in the cooperative. Uh, as I've told you, uh, co cooperatives are self-financing. They are umbrella cooperatives that government puts in money. Few cooperatives like dairy. Dairy is a very important sector in the economy where the government puts in money to make sure farmers get to be paid. It's like also the sugar industry. They want to make sure that farmers are paid because sugar is consumed a lot. Milk is consumed a lot in this country. So the government must have interventions. And that's why the government is ready to write off debts because of that, uh, that particular special a special, uh, special priority of that particular commodity to the people of Kenya. But I've said clearly that how long will this go on with the austeric measures that are there? Shall we keep on the government writing off debts? What I'm saying here that 
and what I am committing myself is that we must confront this problem and say why do we have problems in cooperatives. And the major, major reason we have problems in cooperatives is actually management, nothing else. So if we can sort out management issues, then this problem will not be there. This issue of ESCC, it is unfortunate that such institutions are used. It's unfortunate, and I remember the president committing himself that such an institution will never use, be used. He, can, he might not be the one, but it might be people around him. He might not know. Uh, but uh, it, it is unfortunate because in the process they lose focus. The elephant is in the house. They are going for a squirrel. That is very unfortunate. Uh, the issue of performance contract. I'm happy that, uh, Mr. Chairman, I started performance contracting when I was Minister for Planning. And it worked very well. It was one of the Vision, uh, Vision 2030 tech that we have performance contracting. And we wanted this performance contracting to all government institutions, to central government ministries, to parastatal, to agencies, to sagas, so that what you do can be measured. There are targets. Are you able to meet targets? People now sit in the office. Eh? Institutions are making losses, but they still continue to be in office. I'm hopeful that uh, as I come to the office, if you approve it, I'll talk to my colleague, um, Badi, who has now taken over the Minister of uh, National Treasury. He has not. <laughs> who, who, who will? He has not taken over uh, if, any of his. If, if, if you have approved it, if you approve it, yes. easy. if you approve with somebody to take over the National Treasury and, uh, min and economic planning, because that is where this uh, performance contracting is supposed to be uh, housed. Then this is one of the issues that I will take it up because that was very good. It motivated people to work very hard. When we, it was being announced at KCC there, some ministers will hide their face because they know their ministries have not done well. So people worked hard. So it is important because we get salaries from the public. So we should be accountable to the public, Mr. Chairman. The last quote, George Morugara, Sir George, Daoud and Mary. Thank you. Thank you very much. One Mr. question Speaker. each. One question, then the public one I'll ask I will not